Welcome to the Gospel Liberty Podcast. Thanks for joining us for another episode. Hi. Several times in the Bible, you see a phrase used describing sin that people are, quote, doing what is right in their own eyes. And that's what we're going to be talking about on this episode. For example, Judges 17.6 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Hmm. Where the Lord warns Israel in Deuteronomy 12.8 not to do what they are doing here today. He says, quote, Everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. Now, this is one of the many ways that sin is described in the Bible. Rebellion against God, seeking satisfaction and happiness and things other than God, disobeying the law of God, worshiping something other than God, etc., and doing what is right in your own eyes. It, this is an insightful way to describe sin because it really hits at what authority we are submitting to. Hmm. So let's talk about what the scope is here. Is sin only doing what is right in your own eyes in the realm of explicitly spiritual things? So like if I do what's right in my own eyes when it comes to the church or when it comes to Bible reading or my thoughts about the Trinity, etc. Well, that's part of it. But Christ is Lord of all. There's not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence, over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry mine. That's that Abraham Kuyper quote. And it's fully biblical, as we've mm. talked about before. Amen. Everything we do, we do to the glory of God, or we are to do it to the glory of God. So there's not any area of life that we're free to live autonomously. That, that means without reference to God, just mm. with reference to our own self and our own thoughts and our own desires. But then we have to talk about what makes someone want to do this. Why why would I want to do what's right in someone else's eyes rather than do what's right in my own eyes? Hmm. Well, it's because God is the author of life and he's the author of joy. Mm -hmm. So his commands are the path to our deepest possible joy. He knows what's best for us. Because he created us. Mm -hmm. And obeying him is what brings him the most glory, which is what becomes our deepest joy when we are converted. Mm -hmm. Glorifying God is what we love to do mm -hmm. as Christians. So first, you have to believe that God really does know better than you. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. Do I really believe that God knows better than me about everything? And then second, you have to want to reject the smaller joy of doing what's right in your own eyes and instead pursue the deeper joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then you have to want God's glory above all else. You have to reject pragmatism as your highest goal. Pragmatism yes. is this philosophy that says whatever works is what is correct. Whatever works is what is right. And that's just what you're going to do. A, a pragmatist, just whatever works, that's what I'm going to do. Even if you have motives to glorify God, he has still laid down the pathway to for how you glorify him. So you can't just say, for example, I, I really want to love people because I know that's how God gets glory. So that's, that's a good motive. I really want to love people. So I, I'm just going to sleep with everyone that I know because that's th that will glorify God because th that's that's how I love people. Well, just because you have the motive to love people and you think that might make people feel really good or something, you don't just have the authority to, to do that. God has laid down the methodology for how you love people and what that looks like. Yeah, no, amen. I think it just even gets into it deeper. Just the overarching thing of what we're even talking about is to view scripture highly, you know, to truly see that this is what God has laid out for us in the word of God. And let's do all that we can by the help of the Holy Spirit to obey it and to see how amazing his, his word is, um, rather than just thinking that, Oh, I we can know just, it's best. Yeah, I know it's best. I can just do whatever I want to do. And, and this is great, but rather to go to scripture to see, um, just the wonderful guide that he has given us. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Or for example, you know, if we said, I, I know it's glorifying to God 
if uh, if we use our minds to be as smart as we can possibly be for his glory. So I'm going to prioritize the best academic school for my children above any other considerations. Hmm. I'm just going to prioritize what the best academic school is because this is what will work to get my kids into the best possible college. That would be pragmatism. Mm-hmm. Or I know it's glorifying to God to have lots of people come to, to church. So I'm just going to do whatever I can to get lots of people to come to my church. I'm going to tone down the the, the gospel. I'm going to tone down uh, uh, lyrics that are about Christ and about the cross and about the wrath of God because that might push people away. Or I'm going to have nurseries and children's times that replace corporate worship. I'm going to have lots of fun and games, et cetera, just because I think that's what people want. I think that's how I could get a lot of people come to my church. That's mm-hmm. pragmatism. Mm-hmm. And it's extremely popular, even in Christian circles. So uh, w- what makes us want to do what is right in God's eyes, it, we, don't just, we shouldn't just be telling ourselves, do what's right in God's yes. eyes. Do it, do it, do it. That's going to last a day, right? Just yep. like you can't tell yourself to like classical music. You can't tell yourself to um, want certain things. You can't just convince yourself to, mm-hmm. to want a certain thing just by telling yourself to want it. Yeah, your desires need to be changed. Your heart needs to be changed. You have to have a true, yeah, a true change of heart and desire. And, your appetite. And, and appetite and joy to, yep. to think that you want you know, something different. Exactly. And that's when Jesus said, quote, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, hmm. John mm-hmm. fourteen fifteen. Our love for Christ grows as we understand his love for us. We have been forgiven much, so we love much. We, we want him to become famous. We want him to be praised as worthy. So Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. The, the way that we grow in keeping his commandments and of doing what's right in his eyes rather than what's right in our own eyes mm-hmm. is when we love him. Mm-hmm. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's going to happen. So we need to grow in loving Christ. And how we do that is we grow in understanding his love for us in the gospel. Mm, amen. And we, we have God's book, 2 Timothy three sixteen through 17. All scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training, and righteousness. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Mm. Proverbs six twenty three. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. So it's first and foremost, this book, the Bible, is a light that shines on Christ in his glory. It shines on our sinfulness, and it shines on Christ's cross and resurrection. And then it's also a lamp showing us what is right in God's eyes. Hmm. So look to the word, Amen. as you just said. Look to the word, the word, the word. When we obey Christ, then he manifests himself to us. That's another wonderful motivation for glorifying Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Hmm. Yes. No, amen. I mean, I think, um, I think the more, um, immature believer or someone who isn't even a believer, would might even listen to what we're saying and think like oh that's so strange or like why why are they saying that like that's really legalistic or um just like something that is just like really crazy but I think that when you see in scripture you know that his commandments are not burdensome it's not a burden to to love the scriptures and to want to obey them to the best of our ability. Of course we are sinners and we are going to fail. We are not perfect at this, but I think that that's something too, that Lord help all of us to continue to grow in our understanding of the scriptures and just to see the joy and, um, and yeah, that our, our hearts would be changed in this. Um, that would be a, a beautiful thing. Right. When you love something, imagine you loved playing the electric guitar and you just started learning, and it was very challenging to mm-hmm. you, but you just loved it. Exactly. It, it didn't matter if, you, if you're if you not, you know, the best electric guitar player in the world. Of yeah. course, you're going to fail, you know, so many times that you try to, to, to play the song, but it's not a burden to you to try. Oh, totally. And you don't get super discouraged and, you know, break your electric guitar. I quit after the first day. This is too hard. 
because it's something you love. Yeah. And I mean, apply that to every, any other, you know, example, you know, oh, someone who just anything that someone actually loves and sticks with, you yes. know, not the, oh, it's the beginning of the year. I'm going to do a new resolution and, you know, I'm going to do this new workout and then, oh, it really only works out for, you know, a month or three weeks or, you, you know, don't love it. because you don't love it. But then think of anything else that ever, everybody loves certain things. So think of that and then apply it to this exact situation situation that we're talking about. And I think that that will be helpful. Yes. And the burden of doing these things, of obeying Christ in order to gain eternal life has been taken away from us. Mm. Jesus took the burden. Amen. He won eternal life for Christians. So therefore our obedience is no longer a burden. It's not mm-hmm. something we have to look at and be fearful about or mm-hmm be nervous about or have this uh, be doing it for the sake of trying to earn the love of God hmm. because Christ has has taken the the burden his yoke is easy his burden Mine is light amen That's and we find rest for our souls in Christ and then it explicitly says in 1 John 5 that his commandments are not burdensome hmm. as you said so if we see these commandments as a burden is if we see obeying God as a burden or doing what's right in his eyes as a burden, we're not understanding and applying the gospel. We're not living in step with the truth of Amen. the gospel, as Amen. Galatians 2 says. And obeying his commands brings joy mm-hmm. and peace and life and blessing, not in an eternal sense, in the sense that we gain eternal life, that mm-hmm. we gain eternal life by obeying his commands, mm-hmm. but it brings peace and joy uh, Psalm 119, 37 says, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Hmm. Or Psalm 119, 93, Psalm 119 is filled with these amazing yes. comments about the word of God. It says, I will never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life. So this is first Christ earning life for us in the gospel for by keeping God's commandments God has given Christ life and us in union with him. We we get to experience that by faith. But then we're also united to him. And in our union with him, he teaches us obedience. And we experience deeper life, the deeper life of knowing Christ more intimately on this side of glory, hmm. having more of his manifest presence, having a greater communion with him. You know, theologians have said, our union with Christ never changes. But our communion, our communion with him will change mm-hmm. depending on how deeply we're walking with him yes. and living according to his ways, believing according to his um, true thoughts about the nature of reality rather than our own. Hmm. Amen. So let's get practical here, as we usually do, in um, some areas that we are all tempted to do what is right in our own eyes, uh, offering our own opinions or living by our own opinions. Let's talk about some of those areas that uh, that we're often tempted to, to do that in. We're, we so often think that God's word is silent <laughs> on things, much of the time simply because we, we don't know God's word. Yes. So we were just talking about earlier today, you know, okay, you know, what about something like what I'm going to choose to have for dinner tonight? You know, should I have the uh, should I have the chicken or should I have the steak or should, or should I have the salad? Oh, I want to do what's right in, in God's eyes, not, not what's right in my own eyes. So um, let me find a verse for that. Well, there is an overarching verse in biblical principles that might guide your decision making, but there is a lot of freedom in things that are not explicitly talked about in scripture. Yes. So when, when we talk about this, we're not saying that doing what's right in God's eyes means... Always means to eat steak. Right. <laughs> always means to eat steak. Or tri- no, it would be tri-tip if it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Only tri-tip. But th- that's, not, that's not the point, that there's a verse for every little specific thing. Um, you know, oh, every single song that I listen to, I need to find a verse for that. Otherwise, I'm doing what's right in my own eyes. No, not at all. But there are tons of principles Mm -hmm. in scripture that should be informing all of our decisions and everything that we do, um, that that we would be doing it to the glory of God. And then there are more specifics than you than you think or than Mm -hmm. a lot of people think Mm -hmm. there are uh, more specifics and certainly more guiding principles. So Mm -hmm. let's talk about some of those parenting styles. Um, You know, so often folks will just say, well, I don't think it's right to do this or that as a parent and Mm -hmm. they'll give all these reasons why they don't think it's right. 
and they just assume that scripture is silent on on uh, certain parenting issues. And um, are you getting your thoughts from scripture? Amen. Where is that, you know, take certain thoughts about discipline, for example. Are you getting that from scripture? What biblical texts are informing your viewpoint there? Mm-hmm. Why are you thinking the way you're thinking? Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, how much time you spend with your own kids versus sending them to, to other people? Um, yes, there's no black and white, you know, certain hour amount or something that's not going to be in scripture. But what biblical texts are informing your viewpoint? Or are you just doing what's, this seems good to me. You know, I saw some Instagram influencers doing this, or, you know, this is what my parents did, or this is what, uh, um, you know, I've always thought based on certain TV shows I watch. So therefore seems good to me because mm-hmm. of X, Y, Z, and it has nothing to do with Christ or totally. his glory. Yeah. And then, I mean, even just thinking of how you're spending your time with your children, how you're discipling them, you know, is it just, oh, I'll just, you know, send them off and, you know, that, that the church can, you know, I really can just let my hand go and, you know, the church can have more of a hand in that and they can be the primary disciplers and, you know, I'll, I'll just, you know, pray at meals and, you know, say a couple things here and there, but, you know, they'll, they're doing a great job over there. Um, I mean, so again, those are just random thoughts or your own opinion um, that's not uh, biblical. That's you not know? doing what's right in God's eyes. We, we, we've heard folks say, oh, yeah, you know, it's good for uh, the, the kids to have relationships with a lot of other youth ministry type people. So then when they're going through you know difficult things in their life that they can't share with us as parents, then they'll go to uh, to those youth ministers or those other folks to to, to do that. Where are you getting that? Are, is that doing what's right in God's eyes or is that what's doing doing what's right in your own eyes? What is informing that type of thought that a child shouldn't be or that there's uh, certain things that a child can't share hmm. with his or her parent? Um, I mean, the parent is just blatantly, you know, not doing their job. You know, I mean, God calls us to, you know, to train up the children and to be open and honest and, you know, cultivate a beautiful openness. And, um, I think that's a very sad thing to consider when, um, to think of like, oh, you're, you know, you don't want your, or the child might not want to talk to the parent about something I think is very interesting. Amen. So how about uh, education styles, doing what's right in your own eyes, uh, sending kids to the civil government to be discipled, to be educated for hours and hours, um, to be uh, uh, learning from uh, unbelieving teachers, folks who are uh, uh, enemies of God, who have worldviews that are opposed to everything true, good, and beautiful uh, around other children, the the student when he's fully trained will be like his teacher are, are where are you getting these thoughts that the only way for a child or the major way for a child to impact the culture and to love unbelievers is for the child to be sent off to the civil government to mm-hmm. be discipled mm-hmm. where is that coming from what biblical texts are influencing that? Are you doing what's right in your own eyes? Are you doing what's right in God's eyes? No, amen. And I mean, so often, you know, when people do that, it is because they, you know, oh, they want to work, you know, the, the mom wants to go off and, you know, because I need a break, you know. I mean, I've heard so many people say that, just like they're so excited for the kids to go off to school and so that they can work and they can do their own thing. Um, and it, it does seem... Um, selfish at times when, when that's kind of how it is, you know, just like they don't want to do the hard work of training their own children, but rather would, you know, get pumped to just send the kid off to the government school, um, or elsewhere to get educated. Yeah. Because it seems to me in my own, in my own eyes that I need at least two hours a day of just time away from my kids because that's just what seems right uh, to my own eyes. That's what everyone else is doing. That's what I, you know, see on on TV. That's what uh, I have learned from social media. So it seems right in my eyes. So that's what I'm going to do rather than, no, am I doing what's right in in God's eyes? Am I thinking his thoughts? Hmm. Or what about economic policies? Well, I think it seems right in my eyes. I think it'll work if we adopt a 
a fiat monetary system where we have currency by by decree of the big civil government. I think it's right if we have huge tariffs. I think it's right if we have a big central bank, if we go into debt to fund these these big programs. Hmm. Uh, that, that seems like it'll work to me, that it'll hmm. create a prosperous system. And you just divorce that from, hey, what what does God think about this? What does he say? What's going to glorify him? What principles has he laid down? What explicit comments has he laid down about civil government? Mm-hmm. Am I looking to him? Yeah, or just any other law that is passed or that is trying to get passed um, is also just a wild thing to consider, too, when considering yeah what the Lord has laid out for us in Scripture. Amen. Right. Politics. Yeah. I th- just like you're saying, I think it's loving to have socialistic policies. I think it's loving for the civil government to take people's money and then to redistribute it to other people. I I think that is really loving for everyone to have the same level of net worth. So um, therefore, that's what I'm going to vote for. That's Mm -hmm. what I'm going to advocate for. Mm -hmm. Rather than, wait, what does God say about this? Am I doing what's right in my own eyes or in his eyes? I think that it should be a crime for someone to possess a certain drug, right? That, that's a very popular one in, in our day, the, the, the drug war and the issue of uh, crimes for, for, for drugs. I think it's wrong for this. Well, where are you getting that? What is informing that viewpoint? Mm-hmm. What, what in scripture is informing you there? Mm-hmm. Or I think that it's a good idea to have property taxes. Where is that coming from? Um, yeah. or punishments for, for crimes, you know, what, what should punishments be for, for crimes? Oh, I think that if someone steals something that they should, you know, have their hand cut off or something, or you just, you know, say these random things, or I think it should be a 20 year sentence for doing that. Uh, but where are you getting yeah, that? Where is it coming from? I mean, it's just so interesting to mm-hmm. like, think of it and then consider history and consider, certain, you know, guides and laws that were laid out in the past and then just how things have um, changed quite a bit over time. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it would be a beautiful joy to get back to um, how the Lord has designed it to be. <laughs> Lay things out in his word because <laughs> yeah. he, he has, he has, exactly. there, there is a, a, a penal code in scripture or, or, you know, you hear folks say often, oh, I think it's unjust. Uh, I think the death penalty is unjust. Um, well, you know, is that doing what's right in your own eyes or is that uh, what's right in, in God's eyes? We need to think about these things. Or, or how about church music? I like these songs and and I don't think it's bad to sing these songs in corporate worship, for example. They're songs that I like. And I, I don't think it's wrong to, you know, do X, Y, Z with how I'm conducting uh, church music in, in corporate worship. Um are you getting your theology of of music in corporate worship from scripture mm-hmm. or are you just getting it from what you prefer and you haven't really thought about and, and built this uh, this theology from scripture up that then you know brings out in practice what you're going to do in, in corporate worship and you have biblical reasons why you are doing everything that you're doing and you're and it is uh, maximally glorifying to God or are you just doing I, I just I want to do this it seems good yeah, to oh me. the sound oh the song is a good beat or you know oh maybe more people will sing it you know rather than this other one um yeah. or it'll attract more people attract more people it's what people want to hear it's the style that that people want to hear or or they just aren't you know even thinking that much about it it's just like oh just, just oh, whatever just, I heard the song on the radio oh, it's, it sounded one, like so a great song it. yeah it said it said something uh, about Jesus one time, so it must be a great song to sing. Uh, how about a children's stuff in in church, nurseries, Sunday schools, etc.? I think that it's right to set up a nursery. Um, I, that's that's right, and I think that you know children of certain ages should not be included in corporate worship. Okay, where where is that? Where are you getting that in Scripture? Does Scripture speak to anything about? children in corporate mm-hmm. worship about mm-hmm. what corporate worship is the special presence of, of christ well i think it's just really distracting you know yeah i just think it's just too distracting to you know have a child in the service because it's about me and mm-hmm. you know my time with god yes yep. and and i i need this time this undistracted time where it's perfectly silent like a library or like a movie theater where i'm kind of watching a, a show and that's what's right to me 
therefore we need to do that. Or, mm. you know, this is the way that we're going to, uh, you know, no one's going to come to church if we don't have, you know, really good children's programs. So therefore that's, that's what we need to do. That's what's right in my eyes. Hmm. Or how about church budgets and payment for staff and, and pastors? Hey, this is how good businesses are, are run. This is how organizations grow. This is how organizations are really efficient when we pay a lot of staff members and when we organize things in a, in a certain way. So therefore, that's what seems right to me because, hey, we all want this organization to grow and to be efficient and, and successful. So that's what seems right to me rather than, wait a second, am I looking in scripture in God's word? What does God have to say? What's Mm -hmm. right in his eyes Mm -hmm. about how many people we should be paying and why we should be paying them and what a good amount to to pay them is. Are these things informed by the word of God or do you just immediately say, hey, the word of God is silent on this. So So therefore, therefore, I'm just going to do whatever I think. Exactly. Is it silent on there? Have you really have you really looked? Have you really considered? Because Scripture has a lot to say about um, what uh, about paying pastors or not paying pastors, and when pastors don't take a salary, when when they do. Uh, there's a lot to, to consider there about how God's money should be spent, types mm-hmm. of things that should be prioritized, mm-hmm. etc. But what about how we think about technology? and social media do we just do whatever we want to do or whatever anyone else is doing when it comes to uh, what uh, subscriptions we order with you know netflix or oh disney plus everyone's (laughs) doing that with the kids so it seems good to me you know to make sure that the it seems like a fun show to me Um, or with our social media oh there's the here's the newest Social media app, TikTok, everybody's doing it. That's mm-hmm. great. So therefore, I'm just going to do it. Have you thought biblically about the effect that it's going to have on you mm-hmm. with how God calls you to use your time, what he calls you to prioritize? Yeah. No, I I, I was just going to say that too, just how so much of this is just how, yeah, how our time is being spent, how intentional we are being with it rather than just, yeah, not being intentional, <laughs> mm-hmm. just doing the exact opposite and just doing whatever you want to do. And then, you know, days and hours and weeks and all the things go by and all of a sudden it's just, there's just no depth, you know, there's just, you know, oh yeah, you just scroll on Instagram all day or you right. just sit and watch Netflix every night or you just do your own thing, your own thoughts, your own everything. Um, and it's not, it's not an intentional life, you know, it's not a, um, God glorifying life at times because it's just very selfish and yeah. Yep. For sure. And I remember when we were, um, you know, many years ago, it's, it seems like, but when smartphones were first coming out and, you know, we're not perfect, we don't do this perfect or we're not exalting ourselves here, just giving one example, but I remember I was kind of cautious about smartphones and folks are talking about, you know, whether or not uh, how Christians should think about those things. And Tim Challies wrote a book called The Next The Next Story, and it was about uh, uh, technology and, and hmm. it was all about just what scripture says about technology and certain considerations that yep. we should have. And that's such a wonderful example of what we're talking about yes. rather than just, oh, there's something new coming out. Therefore, and you know, everyone's thinking it's really cool to adopt it or to mm-hmm. get involved with it. Therefore, I'm just going to immediately do it. I'm not even going to give a thought about yeah. what God thinks about it yeah. or what the uh, benefits might be to how I can glorify him by using this and what the uh, dangers or temptations might be mm. in utilizing this tool and certain uh, wisdom issues that I should consider in, in scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have you ever picked up a book like that when it comes to, you know, your, your social media habits or yeah. your um, thoughts about technology? I think Tony Reinke has a book coming out that I just saw on, on Westminster Bookstore. I think it comes out in January and it's about uh, technology hmm. and the glory of God. So our, once That's again, those things will help to stir you exactly. on to think intentionally about these things rather than just, I feel like doing it. It seems good to me. So I'm just going to do it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. How about when believing children get baptized? Do I just do, this seems right to me. You know, if you're a Baptist and you just think, Hey, you know, it seems 
it seems right that a children a, a child couldn't possibly you know believe in Christ or you know he needs to wait until he's gone through enough trial or hmm. enough suffering or you know until he has a certain you know intellectual understanding he needs to at least be able to have a a middle school uh, at least have graduated from middle school or from high school in order to understand mm-hmm. the gospel or, you know couldn't couldn't be saved or understand grace before that so that's what seems right to me or do you go to scripture amen and say hey what does scripture say about this you know am i thinking god's thoughts after him yeah no i mean that that's personally um yeah just very saddening and very angering at times um, because yeah, it really impacts people's lives totally and their faith does. in Christ. Yep. And their children. And just, I feel like, yeah, the whole, you know, moralistic pressure, you know, that is at such a weight on the child, you know, to feel like, Oh, I, you know, I haven't attained enough or, you know, I haven't, you know, gone through enough suffering or, you know, Oh, I just should, I have to wait till I'm 12 or, yeah, you know, I haven't been obedient enough oh, yet. Oh, I just, it's so to, to be let into yeah, God's family I, and, and I, church. Yeah. Again, I, I, I would um, I'm, I'm very quick to want to change my view when I see it, um, laid out in scripture, but that's just one of them that I, I have no idea where so many churches are getting these thoughts of, um, you know, waiting so long mm. to baptize a child. Yeah. Um, I, I don't get that. It comes from good motivations that they want, you know, to only have believers, true believers in the visible church. But then that good motivation that they have looked at the scripture, oh yeah, you know, we should, we should only have true believers in the visible church, that, that has clouded their ability to look at what scripture says about when you baptize someone. Hmm. You bet all true believers should be baptized according to, according to the Bible. It's so obvious and clear. And um, if we are, you know, just doing what's right in our own eyes, then we'll come up with all of these, you know, uh, methodologies that we have and these sophisticated thoughts about, oh, a 12-year-old, you know, can believe this psychologically or, you know, 18-year-olds have finally broken free from their parents. So that's when they make Hmm. it their own. All these thoughts are just coming from our own minds rather than coming from what the scripture says Hmm. about when a person should be baptized. Amen. Or how do we think about the future direction of the world, optimism versus pessimism. Hmm. Am I just thinking what is right in my own eyes? Hey, you know, things seem to be going bad in my neighborhood or my state or my nation. Therefore, things must be getting worse throughout the earth. Or, oh, oh, the last 50 years have been a a great trial. There's been, you know, a couple world wars. Therefore, you know, things are clearly getting worse. Hmm. Yeah, no, totally. I think it's it's easy just to get caught up in our own time and our own thoughts and our own views of things and not to, you know, really want to study the word of God to see to see what, you know, the what future. God says. Yeah, what what God says, what he has laid out for us and what the thoughts are for the future and um and all of that and not just get caught up in our own little worlds and our own little thoughts of what we think and um Yeah, every all of that. everything I see on the news and social media is just yeah, things are, everything is horrible and, you know, everyone is getting more and more ungodly. It's just, it, it, it's crazy. But are you looking at what scripture says mm. about, about the topic? What about how you spend your time, how your children spend their time, you know, certain activities that you get the, get the kids involved in or how many nights a week you're doing a certain activity? Do you just do whatever you feel like is right? Or are you examining the word and the principles laid down in the word? And are you in prayer over the scriptures Hmm. and making your decisions based on those priorities that are laid out in God's word? Once again, there's no, you know, um, black and white number of these are the nights of the week that you should have your kids in baseball or something. That is not, uh, that's not going to be there. Um, there's so much freedom in these things. But mm-hmm. the, the point is, are you just doing what you feel like? Are you just doing what you think is best? Or are you informed by God's priorities and by God's words mm-hmm. that he has revealed? Yeah, or even like letting your children make decisions for you or for the family or just, oh, my kid wants this, so, so yes. therefore I'm going to do it. You know, or, oh, my kid, you know, my child really is having a, you know, is complaining about this. So therefore, you know, we're going to switch it up to, 
accommodate. Again, not saying that you don't want to take your children's thoughts or, you know, their struggles or, you know. You take that into account. Of course. Yes. Amen. Take that into account. But um, don't just let your child make decisions for your family or for you. Um, but yeah, go to the word, go to the word, go to the word of God to see uh, what he has laid out for you. Yes. Because sometimes what your child doesn't want is the thing that is best for him or her. Amen. So it really, yes, you should listen to what your child wants or doesn't want, and you should uh, you should care about what's going on in your child's heart and his desires, her desires. But in the end, um, what the child wants should never, never be any type of even remotely close to ultimate influence on what your decisions are as hmm. a parent. You are called by God as a parent. You were put in authority over this child by God to bring the child up in the discipline and instruction of the mm. Lord, not to change your strategy at, at whatever your child doesn't like in the moment. Or what about dating and courtship? I don't think it's that big of a deal to live with someone before marriage. It, it feels right to me. It seems right to me. You know, it seems like the best way that I could decide if I want to spend the rest of my life with this or everybody person. else is doing it. So I'm just going to, yeah, it seems and this must be the best way to go. Yeah. It's really not that big of a deal. Folks think, or to, you know, it, to spending a lot of time one-on-one -on -one alone with a person who isn't my spouse. How, how, how else am I going to get to know the person or, you know, kind of emulate a, a marriage um, relationship and decide whether or not I should be with this person for, for the rest of my life. It seems right in my eyes. Or, you know, where are you getting that? What is, what has informed that? Is it God? Is it his principles? Is it his word? Is it other mature godly Christians? Or is it just kind of whatever, what you think or mm. what you want? Amen. What about how you give, save, and spend God's money? Hmm. Do you give, save, and spend based on whatever is right in your eyes? Or do you think about every dollar? This is God's dollar. Hmm. And I want to do what's right in his eyes. I want to maxim, maximize his glory with every dollar. That's very, very good. Or how about how you dress? Yeah. I, yeah. How you dress. Oh, I just, this is what I think looks great. This is what I like. Oh, everyone else, this is the trends right now. This is what everyone's wearing and what looks cute. So therefore I want to do it, even if it's, you know, completely immodest or. Um, Extremely expensive and it's crowding out other priorities with, yes, with money. Yes. Amen. It's just, this is, this is what I feel is right. So I'm going to do it mm -hmm. or where, where you live. Oh, this is what other people prioritize. This is what I was told to prioritize. I was told to prioritize a lot of land or I was told to prioritize li living in an apartment or I was told that it's completely normal to have a certain size house mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And you just are this fish in the stream that is swimming exactly with the current, hmm. just going along with the zeitgeist, with the spirit of the age. Yes. Or are you, because it just seems right to you, you're doing what's right in your, in your eyes, or are you doing everything that you're doing to God's glory? Some people can live in a trailer to the glory of God. Other people can live in a mansion to the glory of God. Some people live in the city to the glory of God, others in the country. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying that there is, you know, a specific no, command there's, in scripture. There's, yeah, there's much freedom. There's, it's just the overarching thing here. Just get in the word of God, study the scriptures and do all to the glory of God. Yep, <laughs> um, exactly. Again, we're not going to do it perfectly, but at least let's attempt to yes. be thoughtful of these things and the Lord will, the Lord will help us. Let's have reasons from scripture for why we're doing what we're doing. Some Amen. of these things that we've talked about, there are explicit commands on, and there are explicit right and wrongs on yes. you know, um, certain things that we've talked about. Other things are more um, open, but there should always be, you should always have a reason. This is the reason why I'm doing this. This is why mm. this is going to bring mm -hmm. God the most glory. Amen. And what about, you know, how you think about ethnic issues, how you think about gender roles? Are you just thinking what's right in your own eyes or what, you know, is a, a current trends in society or what's going to, you know, uh, win you a lot of friends or enable you to get a lot of promotions? Hmm. Or are you 
thinking what what God says. Amen. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many examples. I mean, as you can see, and if you are still listening, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I think it's just great to to be just thoughtful about all of the things. Um, just be mindful of how we can glorify the Lord through our lives and the decisions that we're making and the things that we're doing and how we're spending our time and to not just go about, you know, doing whatever works. And, um, yeah, the, the pragmatism seriously is a disease yes. and, um, and a yeah. sinful disease that yes, spreads. Amen. And are, do we think that we want to, glorify God and we want to live according to his word and we want to be informed and driven by scripture. Do we go mm. to the scriptures and say, where am I getting this thought in the Bible? Where, where am I getting this? Why am I thinking this? That is what we, we want to encourage ourselves to and call mm. you to Amen. is to think, you know, where do I see this in scripture? And to make all of our, to, to conform our minds and our, and our actions and our affections to the word of God. So mm. to close, Jesus, he always did what was right in God's eyes. Mm. Amen. He said in John 4 that his food was to do the will of his father. Mm. In him was no sin, First John 3, 5. He always did what was right in his father's eyes. Hmm. He never had any sinful flesh and he never just did what was right in any sinful way in his own eyes. He always did what was right in God's eyes. So keep your eyes on Christ. Amen. He is your righteousness. We will so often do what is right in our own eyes. So sadly, we will so often fail at this sin, rebel, but keep your eyes on Christ. The hmm. one who by faith alone, we can have his righteousness applied to us and we can live with him in unending joy thanks for joining us for this episode of the gospel liberty podcast